Hi, I'm Eric Larson, and you're watching Invest Comics TV. Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Jay Katz. I'm the executive producer of Invest Comics TV. Today I'm proud to present the first episode of a four-part series with comic book legend Neil Adams. Our quest on Invest Comics TV is to bring you the biggest, the brightest, and historic chapters within the comic book industry. This also includes rising stars in every facet within the comic book business. Best Comics TV, the first, the best. Actually, um, sounding stupid, I'm sure, is my responsibility, but well, it's my just specialty. trying to make me sound. Yeah. It's my specialty to sound stupid. My, my hair now. There you go. Yeah, uh, there you mine go. too. Anyway, we're here today with Neil Adams. And Neil, I, I don't know where to start. Neil Adams Studios, Continuity Comics. Continuity properties, animatics. Wow. I mean, you, you can pretty much start anywhere. I'll talk about anything, and uh, and uh, you can just, uh, you know what? If you just ask me a question, I'll just go. Okay. So, uh, now, if you ask me about science, I'll go for like three hours. But if you go about comics, maybe 20 minutes. All right. Well, we'll start with the comics, and we'll come back to the science for another one. How's that? Okay. Let's start with when you were a teenager. Your first job was a daily strip type of thing. Am I correct? No, I, my first my first job was for Archie Comics, and I did uh, the Archie joke pages. They don't have those anymore, but I was doing Archie joke pages. That was my. Those were the first people that um, took pity on me and let me uh, draw something. In those days, um, there was no. Well, there were no new comic book artists. I mean, there's no, there's nobody within five years my junior or five years my senior in comic books. Essentially, wow. that was a that was a barren time. So uh, when I when I wanted to get into comics and everybody told me, they not only told me that it was insane to want to get into comics, they told me that comics would be out of business in a year. Everybody, Joe Simon. Uh, Bill Perry up at DC Comics, who was looking at artists as they brought work in. Um, my teachers, uh, Regis Philbin, everybody that, uh, everybody, everybody knew that comic books were on their way out. So, so let me see, Regis Philbin for uh, career advice. Is that? No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, Joe Simon, Joe Simon for career advice. Yeah, and you know, Regis is doing pretty good for career advice. Joe Simon um, worked at Archie Comics with Jack Kirby, yep. and they were doing The Fly and a bunch of other things. And I brought my samples up there to Archie, and they, this was, they had this realistic superhero line. And I showed my work, and they said, well, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon will come in very often. So I brought samples back three separate times. Then finally, in frustration, the Archie guy said, Look, why don't we get Joe Simon on the phone? You know, he's seen the samples and maybe you'd like to talk to him. So anyway, they got Joe Simon on the phone and and Joe said to me, I mean, didn't not these exact words, although I guess I, they should ring in my head uh, throughout the rest of my life. Neil, I saw your work. I like it. I think you could do work for us but I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to help you, but you're not going to think it's a, you're, that I'm helping you, but I'm going to turn you down, and I'm going to advise you to do something else because, Neil, in a year from now, there's not even going to be comic books. Okay. And so you may not think this is a favor, but <laughs> this is definitely a favor, and I apologize, but... Sorry, I'm not going to uh, hire you. And so I said, well, thanks, Mr. Simon. <laughs> and hung up the phone. <laughs> and the guys, I turned around to the Archie guys. Uh, Victor Garlick was there at the time, who is still at Archie. And uh, I guess they must have seen the look on my face, the tragedy on my face. And they said, well, maybe you want to draw Archie comics. I said, I will do anything. And um, so I started to do Archie pages for Archie Comics. It was my first money. My mother was very happy. I was actually bringing home a paycheck. And, in fact, one day I did uh, – one week I did uh, five pages 
for uh, $32.50 a page. That's writing, lettering, uh, penciling, and inking. $32.50 for five pages, which at that time turned out to be, I think, 200 and something dollars. And I went to the bank and I cashed the check and I brought the money home to my mother, who was, we were having a, a rough time at the time. And uh, she was drinking coffee at the table and she looked up at me and I took the money, which I had cashed, I cashed the check fives, tens, and ones. And I threw it up and I hit the ceiling and the money went all over the kitchen. And my mother whooped and collected the money, and uh, that was my introduction to the potential possibility that you might actually make money drawing comic books. Yep. Well, some people might. I wouldn't fit in that category. <laughs> but uh, if I, I I found this on Wikipedia because I didn't know this about your history, or you can tell me if it's accurate, but you did a, a daily They never newspaper. are accurate. Huh? <laughs> You did a, according to them, you did a daily newspaper strip for, what was it, Marcus Welby or one of the? Ben Casey. Ben, ben Casey, Casey, the neurosurgeon, yeah. Uh, Vince Edwards played Ben Ben Casey, very grumpy kind of, uh, um, kind of, kind of, what's that new show that's on? House, with the, yeah. House, kind of like House. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I did that, but I didn't, we could hardly call it the beginning of my career because, my career began when I was 18 years old, and I got the strip when I just turned 21, meaning that, that I could sign my own contract. But at that point, I had had a whole career. I had done uh, uh, comics for advertising. I did uh, certainly the arts pages. Then I did, uh, did backgrounds and other work on uh, Bat Masterson, was based, based on the Bat Masterson TV series. Those of us who remember Gene Barry doing Bat Masterson, there you go. Um, and then I did a lot of commercial work. Then I worked for Johnstone and Cushing doing comics for advertising. I did illustration work. I did, I jammed a lot of work into three years. And when I got the uh, Ben Casey work, uh, um, I, re I was really 20 years old, probably the youngest, uh, maybe not the youngest uh, syndicated cartoonist, but I think I was, certainly at the time. And, uh, I lied to them. I told them I was 25 because I knew they wouldn't believe that somebody could do a syndicated strip at 20 years old. And uh, I competed with really the best guys out there, the um, uh, Stan Drakes and the Leonard Stars and all the rest of them. And uh, I, did, I did pretty well considering that I was uh, just turned 21. Discount Comic Book Service, where you can save 40 to 75% off on new comics, collected editions, graphic novels, action figures, statues, and other one-of-a-kind items from DC, Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, Boom Studios, Top Cow, Dynamite, and many, many more. Go to www.dcbservice.com for easy ordering and fast delivery. Or you can visit our brick-and-mortar location at 10202-C Coldwater Road in Fort Wayne, Indiana. DCBS, welcome home. The guy yeah. that hired you for that, I believe, according to this article I read, was Al Cap's brother? Jerry Cap. He didn't exactly hire me, because if he had money to hire me, I would have taken it. Uh, <laughs> what he did was he sucked me into the process, and uh, and uh, everybody else seemed to get the lion's share of the money. I got $210 a week is what I got for it. So it wasn't hiring. I, I don't know if we put that into that category. I got some of the money that the syndicate sent to oh, the uh, okay. creatives. Hired and hornswoggled begin with the same letter. Yeah, con me. He was, Jerry Cap is, was the, uh, for anybody who's interested in the history of it, Jerry Cap was one of two brothers of Al Cap. The other brother was Elliot Kaplan. Uh, we come from a time where uh, Jews were always changing their names, and Al Cap, of course, was a Jewish boy. Uh, 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 Kaplan was his name, and, and Elliot, who didn't change his name, uh, was the writer of several comic strips, um, uh, Dr. Kildare, The Heart of Juliet Jones, Big Ben Bolt, and I, f I forget the other ones. Anyway, he was a prolific comic strip writer, and Jerry, uh, Jerry was handled promotion for his brother, uh, Al, and he also did. Uh, he also wanted to become a comic strip writer, and 
when when Elliot got Dr. Kildare, Jerry thought, I'm going to get Ben Casey, and then I'm going to get this some artist to draw it, whoever the hell that might be, and that turned out to be me. <laughs> and you moved on from there, uh, and you did – Several, but one of them I'd like to uh, concentrate on. Well, you did several DC characters. You did, of course, Batman, which you're still doing. We would call that we would call that by way profession. By the way, professionally a come down. Usually, especially in those days, uh, you didn't rise to do comic books. You rose to do a syndicated strip. So having a syndicated strip at 20 years old was a big coup. Yeah. Going down to do comic books was considered to be a very negative thing. Um, that has changed now, has changed very much. Kind, because kind of a role Thomas reversal thing? Yeah, I think uh, history has like gone back on itself, and uh, and now suddenly comic books are the big deal, and comic strips are gag-a-day, no, nobody cares. Pretty they nice. used to People used to march on City Hall if like they took a... Uh, Little Orphan Annie out of their local uh, yeah, newspaper. I do recall uh, that. And, and everybody got all excited about it. But now, you know, people read the comic strips in the newspapers incidentally. They, and, and they are what we call in the business gag a day. Yep. Comic books are significant and ha <laughs> ha literature. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're certainly art, in my opinion. And I have, Well, there you go. I have several... Um, four drawer filing cabinets full of that art going back to go. when basically when you first started doing comic books. And when, yeah, well, I, I've got to be honest, it wasn't just because of you, it was because that was my. It age. wasn't? No, really? Hmm. Although you're in a lot of those very first. You could lie thought. and tell me that it was. You're certainly the best in the business. How's that one? <laughs> That's good. Or maybe the longest lived in the business. But maybe, maybe. <laughs> in part two of this exclusive series with Mr. Neil Adams, Neil relates how he and a handful of other creatives within the comic book industry address certain significant social issues of the day and how it created significant issues for the comic book industry itself. So come back for part two. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Rick for the planet Zordon. Watch my friends, Ennis, Crenshaw, and Rick Osman go unraveling the secrets right here on the Soup Media Network each Saturday at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, and each Sunday at noon Eastern. They will bring you interesting guests and information from all over, above, or inside your pathetic little planet. Oh my. I've misplaced my tinfoil derby.